Hello, so I would like to talk about my Dharma meditation practice. Um, I'm finding some successes, also some challenges. Um, some of the questions that come up are um, are like having to do with um, forgiving people and being okay with um, being okay with adversity and finding value, know, knowing what your values are and um, knowing that uh, circumstances don't matter, but only state of being matters. Um, and so kind of like l learning how to orient towards the energy in your, in your, um, your field of awareness in such a way that you won't have any regrets. Um, and thinking, um, thinking kind of that, um, what Kierkegaard said, um, that th the religious experience requires a leap of faith, a teleological suspension of the ethical. Um, so that keeps coming up often in my meditation is I find that it's necessary to kind of leap into realms of uh, meditation, thinking about things where um, maybe it's, it's like, um, my English teacher in high school was always focusing on risk risk taking, how it's necessary to take risks in order to be a good person. And this is what uh, Kierkegaard was talking about with the teleological suspension of the ethical. It's necessary to live in such a way that your your love is like you're you're dead, you're dying uh, to every moment of um of nowness, of the love of nowness. And so you're you're understanding what death is, where we go when we die, um, as we live. Um, so love, living, and death are one. And um, um, if we really understand, you know, the, the nature of morality and what it, what human happiness is and what human suffering is, and we, we see that everyone has to go through in their own lives, um, but we're all one, essentially, when you understand that we're all one, essentially, um, um, it's a different story, um, and, um, you know, it's not, it's not like a mystical thing. Meditation is not mystical. It's like a very like straightforward thing, except it's, it's like, um, hard for me to find. Um, I see a, 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 a psychiatrist and, um, I'm in a, a group with a psychologist and they, this, this is what I'm talking about is uh, psychotherapy, um, on myself. Um, Um, but it's like knowing how to program your mind and your energy so that you can, you can be okay with things and you can it's not, you don't have to donate to charities, but that is the essence of what it is. Um, and you don't, you can help the world however you want to help the world, but as long as you're helping the world, but you've got to help the world. So it's, um, you know, there's a way, what meditation is, is it's going into the aloneness of the now moment and the aloneness of the now moment is something where no one can help you only you can help yourself um and you go away from safety and because it's mutually exclusive essentially so you have to do what's right even if it's scary and even if it's, um, you don't know, you're not sure, you have to do what's right. So in my own life, if I want to have a Dharma practice that, that works, I have to look 
at what the aloneness of the now moment is. Know that love, living, and death are one. Understand, I've been watching Deepak Chopra videos, and he explains this very well. He talks about um, how we're not our bodies, and actually, if you remove... Um, I think Deepak Chopra it does a better job of, of explaining this, but we're trying to talk about the same thing. Um, it's, uh, you know, when you, when you, you identify with a life and a body and, and all that, that's not really the correct um, perception of what things are. The truth is actually that we're, we're separate from everything arising in awareness and we're eternal and infinite. And so there's a way to sustain this um, realization and different different schools of thought have different ways of thinking about it. And they tend to argue with one another about what the best way is. But I do not like that. I prefer trying to integrate all of the different perspectives and make something um, coherent and integral. Um, so um, I'm finding that my Zen practice... Um, and my Jung Sendo practice have some cognitive dissonance coming up uh, because my the Zen practice is um, wanting me to go in some somewhat different directions, but the Jung Sendo is offering some unique insights, um, and um, I think that. Um, I don't have any kind of agenda other than just wanting to meditate um, as well as I can. Um, but uh, I guess it it's funny, like I'm deciding what matters and what doesn't matter. And I'm just letting a lot of things that don't matter kind of go away. And, you know, when you really think about it um, in life, you know, maybe you could say, there's no inherent meaning, nothing matters. You could say something along those lines. But, um, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means you can create all the meaning. You can create, like, like the um, creator of the universe. Um, if there's no inherent meaning, you can transcend anything by creating your own meaning. So, um, it's... I guess what I'm talking about is just what Jiddu Krishnamurti talks about, how love, living, and death are one. And when you when you say these words, you know, you you don't you you think they're just words, but they they mean something which is is for lack of a better term a religious truth, and that is something which is of course very problematic, um, and it's kind of problematic in a good way though, um, because. Um, love, living, and death are one means we can actually um, perfect our wisdom, Prajna Paramita, um, to, to perfection. We can perfect our wisdom to perfection. And there's no reason not, to, well, there, you can argue that there's reasons not to, but I, I would argue that there's no, there's never any reason not to, and that we always should perfect our wisdom, um, perfect our prajna paramita, um, and I guess however good my my skill level um, is might. Um, Might be important, but I have a feeling no one understands or cares my spiritual practice. Um, almost no one understands or cares about my spiritual practice, and uh, so that's that's a good thing in some ways. Um, but you know, I I have an a lot of information about prajna paramita, the perfection of wisdom. Um, And no one, no one really cares or understands. So, 
Um, I'm just going to keep focusing on Prajna Paramita. Thank you.